Hi, ladies. I'm so glad to find you here. So let's get started with getting your hormones in order. So as I mentioned in the previous video, we are living an epidemic. Women are accumulating uh, symptoms such as polycystic um, ovarian syndrome, fibroids, endometriosis, thyroid issue, adrenal issue, IBS, anxiety, menstrual disorders, sleeping issues, skin issues, and so on. And while all of these um, symptoms seem not connected, they are actually all connected. They are all hormones related. And what we are doing at the moment is just putting a tape on, on these symptoms, like putting a tape over our red flashlight, pretending that we have addressed the problem while we haven't investigated it. And this is unacceptable today to have so many hormonal issues that haven't been addressed. And if some of you have ever suffered from hormonal imbalances, you know that when our hormones are out of work, we feel like our body is acting out, is acting irrationally. We are going against the current. And when our body don't thrive, we fall out of sync with our lives, out of zone of possibility and away from our life purpose. So I would like to start uh, by helping you decoding your hormonal, hormonal signs. So here you can see three columns. The first one is about meta metabolism and stress symptoms, which are uh, related to pancreas, liver, and also the HPA axis, which is the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis, where you will find the symptoms such as carbs craving, sugar craving, reliance on coffee and energy drinks, uh, hypoglycemia with skipping meals, anxiety, insomnia, headaches, facial hair, weight gain, hypothyroidism, diabetes. And then in the second column, you will find the symptoms associated with the elimination organs, such as the large intestine, the liver, the skin, uh, the kidney, the lymphatic system. And this uh, category, the symptoms connected are bloating or IBS, oily skin, water retention, acne, dandruff, eczema, hair loss, constipation or diarrhea, body odor, night sweat. And finally, the third column is related to the reproductive system, the cycle, sim cycle symptoms, I call it, um, which is connected with the HPO axis, the hypothalamus pituitary ovarian axis, where you will find symptoms such as mood swings, premenstrual syndromes, irregular cycle, fibroids, ovary, ovarian cysts, breast tenderness, polycystic ovarian syndrome, unexplained infertility, cramps, heavy, painful or missing period, migraine and depression. So I would like to take time now, maybe press pause on this video at, the, at this moment, to take time to have a look at where um, you have the most symptoms, where are your symptoms, in which category, so that you can figure out uh, in which category your endocrine system needs more help. And now I will explain to you how to balance your hormones. So I will not go through everything I go with my clients because we are taking three months to do that, but I will um, do a small crash course for you. And the first step is to decrease the toxin exposure, then stabilizing your blood sugar, supporting your elimination organs, nurturing your adrenal glands and synchronizing with your menstrual cycle. But first, before starting, I would like to talk about the most important mistake that we make. First is the misinformation about our hormones. Very few women are aware of how our physiology, female biology works. And because of that, they are not able to take informed decision regarding their health and how to rebalance their hormones. Even the women search a lot online about their condition. They have no proper knowledge to really tackle their issue and have a sustainable um, health. Secondly, our cultural conditioning 
like the the powerful working woman, very strong, looking good, very fit, very young, rejecting the fact that we are getting old. Uh, this puts a lot of pressure on us and we are completely exhausted. Thirdly, uh, we are living in a toxic environment, a toxic lifestyle, we know it, but um, we don't, we will not be able to reduce 100% the toxin we are living in, but we really have to do our best to minimize uh, maxim, maxim, at the maximum uh, the toxin intake. And um, also we are living in a modern society where we have confusing and a lot numerous, uh, numerous information and knowledge about diet, about what we should drink and eat, if it's intermittent fasting, if it's um, cleansing, juicing, uh, low, fab, low fat diet, low carbs diet, it's very confusing. And also we have this desire of finding a quick fix solution to heal our body. And all of this makes us very sensitive hormonally and susceptible to imbalances. So let's talk about stabilizing our blood sugar. So we talk a lot about uh, hypoglycemia, like high um, blood sugar level, which is a very important condition, but we to, very often we don't talk enough about hypoglycemia, like low, low blood sugar, which is also a condition that can have drastic effect on our health. And there are two ways to, to go on to hypoglycemia. The first one is uh, this hyperactive working woman. I think we may have all done it. We start our day with coffee and we don't have any food until mid-morning or even until lunch, or our, coffee, our breakfast is just coffee in a cereal bar and we think it's, a, it's enough. But if we don't eat enough, our blood sugar will simply not be enough. And then the other way to be hypoglycemic, hypoglycemic is if we are overindulge in carbs. The thing is that in re when we eat too much carbs, our pancreas will try to counteract that and it will start secreting insulin to bring back our blood sugar level, level down. And uh, what's happening is that the pancreas miscalculate the amount of insulin needed and is releasing too much insulin and brings our blood sugar too low. And I think you might have noticed that maybe in your life that when you have eaten a heavy meal, like a very good meal, sometimes one hour later, we are still hungry. And this really means that our, our blood sugar level dropped too low. So key notes, key tips to stabilize our blood sugar. It's very simple. It's eating regular meals, regular meals. Keep your food intake stable, whether you are overweight, whether you think you are not hungry, have something regularly. And then add healthy fat to keep your blood sugar stable. Have a steady amount of carbs so that your pancreas doesn't have to um, calculate, to miscalculate, avoid sugary drinks and food. And then we talked about uh, supporting the elimination organs. I always talk about that with my clients. They are really key to support our body because they are there to help us metabolize and eliminate the toxin. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we are exposed to so many numbers of toxin every day. We, with the air we are breathing, the water we drink, the food we are eating, the clothes we are wearing, the cosmetic we put on our face, the household cleaning product, it's everywhere. And I just wanted to put a small example because these toxins, they are invisible. We don't see them and most of the time we tend to uh, ignore them. We ignore what we don't see. So this example is on average, a woman uses 12 personal care and cosmetic per day. And this means 168 different chemical ingredients per day. This is a lot of toxin. These are a lot of toxin just with cosmetic. So some tips to supporting your elimination organs. So for the liver, food rich in vitamin B and glutathione, add smoothies, cereal, basically a good rule is 
to remember in Chinese medicine, the liver is connected with wood and spring. Spring is green. So remember to eat green broccoli, uh, leafy greens, greens, everything greens, salad is helping, is supporting your liver function of detoxification and the other important function it does and also detox, helping detoxifying your liver. Uh, to support your large intestine, eat a lot of fibers that you can find in beans, nuts, seeds, and lentils so that it's helping peristalsis and elimination. For your skin, just make yourself sweat. Use steam room, sauna, exfoliate, alternate hot shower and cold shower, skin brush, make things move. And this is what you need to do also for your lymphatic system to make the blood and the lymph circulate, to have a good immune system, exercise, make things move. So yoga is very good, trampoline is very good, activities. And this part, uh, I wanted to mention it because um, some of my clients come and they, at in the first glance, they look very healthy, they eat very healthy, like a lot of greens, and they are vegan and they eat really healthy, but they are tired and wired, they are exhausted. And the symptoms they show are low blood pressure, they are dizzy when they stand out, uh, stand up, they have hypoglycemia, craving salt or sugar, they have dark, dark cycle under their eyes, sleeping issues or non-restorative sleep, they show mental fogginess, they have trouble concentrating, uh, they are frequent infection, feeling exhausted after exercising, they are drained, they have water retention, heart palpitation, fatigued, a weak muscle, and all these nice clients eat healthy, but they have their adrenals drained. They are completely exhausted and they are into chronic fatigue. And these adrenal glands are the small glands on the top of the kidneys, they are very known uh, for, um, as the stress uh, glands because they produce cortisol, which is the stress hormones, but they don't produce only that. They produce a wide range, range of hormones. One, uh, some of them are the precursor of the sex, sexual hormones, the reproductive system. And they also produce other hormones that are involved with the kidney, the liver, the heart, and the muscles. So these glands are very important and we need to heal these glands. And for that, we need to optimize our sleep. We need to have regular and constant sleep. We need to correct our blood sugar. We need, it needs to be balanced and stable. We need to minimize stress. We need to reduce inflammation through food and replenish our body with nutrients. Because what's happening is that when we are in constant stress with the lifestyle that we are living now, we are in constant stress. So we are producing a lot of cortisol. And what happens is that if we are in constant stress, this adrenal gland are prioritizing producing stress hormones and decreasing the amount of the other hormones. So this can affect the menstrual cycle. As you saw, um, these glands are producing the hormones involved in the reproductive system. So this can deplete the other system of the body if we are in under constant, constant stress as well. And it's important to reduce inflammation as well because when we are under stress, the body becomes acidic, uh, inflamed, and it's important to replenish our body with nutrients because the body is always trying to heal and repair itself. So if our body is acidic, it's gonna try to alkalinize the body, it's looking for mineral to do that. And if the body doesn't find it, in our food is gonna grab it from our bones. So it's very important to work on all these elements to also smoothen the, the nervous system. And finally, thinking with our cycle for a symptom-free future. So here I'm talking briefly about the four phases of the cycle and how to connect with these phases so that you don't feel that you are going against the current, again, that you don't feel that you are fighting against your body that when you are tired, you need to have energy. And when you have energy, you don't have any activities to do. So here are some, some tips that you can follow for your next menstrual cycle. 
So I started with the menstrual phase, um, the bleeding phase where the progesterone drops as the corpus luteum disappears, triggering the shedding of the uterine lining. And also the estrogen are going down too. In this phase, we feel tired. We might have cravings, cramps, lower back pain. And um, we may also feel relaxed because as I said, and feel a sensation of relief because as I said, this is uh, especially the first three days are called the zero point. It's where our hormones at, are, at our, are their lowest. And it's a really amazing time to, for self-analysis. It's time to evaluate how you are doing in life, redirect yourself maybe if you see yourself not going in the right direction. It's so important to listen to your intuition in this phase. It's an intense elimination process. It requires minerals, a lot of minerals. So replenish your food with iron and zinc. As I mentioned, it's time for rest and recovery, especially the first two, three days when you have this heavy bleeding. And then you can slowly begin again with your other activities. And this phase is followed by the follicular phase where the hypothalamus sends signal to the pituitary to uh, produce follicular stimulating hormone which stimulate the development of the follicles. And this happens because the estrogen starts increasing and sickening the uterus lining. It's the phase, it's like the spring, spring phase. It's a phase to have fun, to go for it, to be creative, we are mentally focused, we are outgoing, we feel vitalized. So as you can imagine, the diet going with that is like fresh, vibrant, it's green, it's salad, it's sprouts, seed, nutrient-dense food. And the activities that are perfect for this phase are outgoing activity, like joyful activity, dancing, Zumba, Vinyasa flow, or start even, it's a perfect phase to start a new activity, something that you always wanted to try it's the best time to do it. And then we reach the ovulation. Um, this is where the, the rise of estrogen triggered the sharp rise of follicular stimulating hormones increase that also is following the increase of the luteinizing hormones stimulating one follicle to sweat, to swell and burst, releasing an egg and the egg is gonna to travel to the uterus. And the estrogen are also here to sicken the uterus, uterine lining. It's a time where we have a deep, um, a very high communication skills. We are really good at conveying clear thoughts and opinion. And we are also really receptive to others' opinion too. It's a good time to have important conversation at work or with your spouse. It's time to connect in community. You are in a stable mood due to the estrogen. You should eat light grains, a lot of veg to metabolize also the, the extra estrogen. It's very important to support the emanation organs so that we don't stay stuck with hormones. They need to, to get out of the body. It's a time where your energy is at max. So high impact exercise and group exercise is really good in this phase. And finally, uh, we enter into luteal phase where the corpus luteum um, causing the production of, uh, is causing the production of progesterone, which is keeping your uterine lining intact and receptive for any potential implantation. Um, in the first phase of the luteal phase, uh, you still have a good energy. And then it starts to decline. Your physical energy declines. You may have PMS, like premenstrual syndromes, if you haven't eliminated properly all the hormones we talked about before, thanks to your elimination organs. It's time to go inwards, to time for attention to yourself, comfort, time to do more self-care, to slow down on your social events, to organize your home. You are starting to nest. You feel like you want to stay in. It's important to eat food rich in vitamin B and magnesium uh, to nourish the liver, the liver who is, um, who is important for the transition of the, for each transition of the cycle. So transition to the, to the next phase, which is uh, the bleeding phase, eat fiber, mix 
leafy greens and more complex carbohydrates, some grounding food. And so, as I said, the first half, you may still have high energy, so you can keep on doing the high impact exercise you were doing before. And then the second half, you might want to slow down with some activity more, more yin, like more walking and yoga. So I've just presented you the Blossom uh, program, the hormonal balance program, where we address the root cause and the issue of the um, of the underlying issues and support the essential function of the endocrine system. And in the next video, I will show you um, about the balance program. I will talk about the menstrual health and the fertility optimization. Thank you for watching. And um, again, you can get more information on my website and you can always write me at my email. And if you already want to start optimizing and syncing connecting with your menstrual cycle, you can download my free book called Harmonious Cycle on my website.